Hey, welcome to today's, uh, or I should say Friday's, um, textbook MMT. We're in number five, chapter five, that is, labor market concepts and measurements. And just a fair warning, you, uh, I may flub a lot of words, but I try to get back to it. And I also make fun of myself if I flub a word, uh, flub a word. There we go, I'm only flubbing words and I haven't read anything yet. Anyway, so uh, in the introduction. Chapter 3 provides an outline of the evolution of economic systems from tribal societies through slavery, feudalism, and eventually to modern capa uh, capacity. <laughs> More messing up. Uh, capitalism, there we go. In addition, uh, in introduction to the concept of labor market as a, as a uh, social construct with embodied uh, embedded, excuse me, power relations uh, was developed to provide the intrinsic understanding of what happens when someone gets a job and receives a wage. This chapter is largely devoted to definitional and measurement issues associated with modern labor markets. We understand, we outline the uh, labor market framework, which incorporates definitions of the states of employment unemployment, and not in the labor force, which are stocks. We classify types of unemployment and argue that the rate of unemployment is an inadequate measure of labor under, under, under utilization. We explain the relationships between our stock measure and the flows between the labor market uh, states, we conclude with the exploration of the average duration of unemployment and its role in the process of labor market uh, hysteresis. Uh, 5.2 Measurement. Many textbooks, wait a minute, let me just kind of get in a better position here. Okay, so many textbooks will state that macroeconomics is the study of the behavior of employment output and inflation in the economy as a whole. Thus, in addition to focusing on how real GDP, national income, and prices are determined, macroeconomics also seek to understand the dynamics of unemployment, or uh, employment, excuse me, and rel relatedly unemployment. Further, a central idea in both macroeconomics and the macroeconomics in efficiency, or is efficiency, getting the best out of the available resources. The concept is extremely loaded and is the focus of many disputes, some more arcane than others. At the macroeconomic level, the efficiency frontier is normally summarized in terms of full employment, which has long been a central focus of economic theory, notwithstanding the disputes that have emerged about what we mean by the term. However, despite doctrinal dispu disputes about how to define full employment, most economists would agree that an economy cannot be efficient if, the, if it is not using all the resources available to it. In recent decades, the emergence of issues relating to climate change have all the resources available have all focused our attention on what that resource resource limit is or should be. In this chapter, we focus on the use of labor resources. The quest for full employment was emb embodied in the policy frameworks and definitions of major institutions in most nations at the end of the Second World War. The challenge for each nation was how to turn its wartime economy, which had high rates of employment because of the uh, persecution spelled uh, the war effort, into a peacetime economy without sacrificing those high rates of labor utilization. In this section, we, uh, we outline key concepts and consider issues relating to measurement. How do we know? how much employment there is at any point in time. What are under uh, unemployment? Now, is it a measure of waste, labor, uh, resources, or are there other issues that should be considered? Labor force framework. The labor force framework consist constitutes 
a set of definitions and conventions conventions that allow national st statisticians to collect data and produce stat uh, statistics about the labor market. These statistics include employment, unemployment, economic inactivity, and underemployment, which can be combined with other survey data covering the example, uh, for example, job vacancies, earning trade and union memberships, industrial disputes, and productivity to provide a comprehensive picture of the way the labor market is performing. The labor force framework is a classification system governed by a set of rules and categories. It forms the accepted foundation for cross-country comparisons of labor markets. The framework was conceived and made operational through the International Labor Organization, or ILO, and its International Conference of Labor Statisticians, or ICLS. These Conferences are expert meet, uh, meetings uh, developed the guidelines or norms for uh, implementing the labor force framework and generating the national labor force data. The Australian Bureau of Statistics, or ABS, publication of labor statistics, concepts, sources, and methods describes the international guidelines that have been agreed by the national statistical agencies. The guidelines, uh, the guidelines outline the organized principles that define a labor force framework. The national st statistical agencies, such as the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the U.S. and Office of National Statistics in Britain and the, the Federal Statistics Office in Germany, work within the international agreement or you know, nationally agreed standards and criteria when publishing labor statistics. The rules constant, uh, constant uh, con sorry, contain without the, or within the labor force framework have the following features. An active, uh, an activity principle, which is used to clarify or classify the population into one of the three basic categories, namely employed, unemployed, unemployed, and in the labor force, and not in the labor force. A set of priority rules which ensure that each person is classified into only one of the three categories. A short reference point uh, to reflect the labor supply situation as a specific, uh, specified, excuse me, moment in time. The priority rules are implied to ensure that labor force activities uh, take precedence over non-labor force activities and working on uh, working or have job employment take precedence over looking for work on employment also. Okay, so now we're in the boxes. I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can always buy this book from Amazon. Um, anyway, so as with statistic, just st statistical measurements of active employment in the informed section or the black market economy in, is outside the scope of activity measures. There is a long-standing concept of pain uh, of not pain, sorry, of gainful work. Could be, could be painful too, but uh, gainful work, which shapes these priorities, but has but this has a proven uh, controversial gainful. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, con proven control controversial. There we go. Yes, gainful work is typically seen as work for profit or pay. One can work in government or in non-profit sector where a payment is received, but unpaid work of any kind is not included. Thus, a person who does ironing for a commercial laundry is defined as pursuing gainful work, whereas if the same person is ironing only for their family, they consider, they're considered inactive. Clearly, with the economic and non-economic roles uh, being biased along the gender lines, this distinction leads to, leads to an undervaluation of a substantial portion of work performed by women, as we noted in Chapter 4. 
Another example of the president's uh, paid, uh, paid over unpaid activity is that persons who maintain a house on an unpaid basis are classified as not in the labor force, while those who receive pay for this activity are in the labor force and, un and employed. Similarly, persons who undertake unpaid voluntary work are not in labor force, even though their activities may uh, very similar may be very similar to those undertaken by the employed. Um, so yeah, there's a, uh, uh, there are figures here. Uh, figure five point one summarizes the labor force framework as it as it applies in Australia, but this structure is common uh, across all nations. National Statistical Agencies conduct a labor force survey, or LFS, on a regular basis, usually across, uh, usually monthly, to collect data using the con concept and definition provided in labor force framework. The working age population, or WAP, uh, WAP, typically refers to all citizens above 15 years of age. In several countries, the lower age threshold is 16. In the past, the age span was from 15 years and um, 15 years old to retirement age, usually around usually around 65 years. However, as social charge uh, changes have seen discrimination laws uh, come into force. In many countries, the upper age limit has been accordingly, uh, accordingly abandoned in several nations. Also, the age at, very, at which retirees can access government pensions has been increased in a number of countries as part of a wider austerity measure. The WAP is broken down into the labor force, the active component, and not in the labor force, the inactive component, a worker's... It, a worker is considered to be active if they are employed or unemployed. The proportion of the adult population who comprise the labor force is governed by the labor force participation rate, which is defined by the, by the ILO. The ratio of the labor force to the WAP expressed as a percentage. We will consider the cyclical behavior of the participation rate later in, this, in the chapter. The ILO defines a person as being employed if, during the reference period that may be in the, as short as one week or even one day, they, they satisfy one of the following. Performing, performed some work for wage or salary in, uh, in cash or in kind, had a formal attachment to their job but with temporarily not at work during the reference period, performed some work for profit or family gain in cash or in kind, or were with an enterprise such as a business farm or service, but who were temporarily not at work during the re reference period for any spe specific reason. What constitutes some works? Some work is unclear and controversial. In Australia, the U.S. say, for example, uh, a person who works one or more hours a week for pay is considered employed which makes the uh, demarc demarcation line between employed and unemployed very thin, a single hour of paid work. Within the employment category, further uh, subcategories exist, which we'll consider later. Most importantly, significant numbers of employed workers might be classified as being un underemployed. If they are not able to work as many hours as they desire because there is insufficient aggregate spending in the economy at that point in time. What const constitutes unemployment according to ILO concept is a person is un unemployed if they are over a particular age, they do not have work, but they are currently available for work and are actively seeking work. Un Unemployment is therefore defined as the difference between employment and the economically adv uh, active population, the civ uh, civilian labor force. Two derivative measure capture a lot of pu pu public attention. There we go. First, the unemployment rate is defined by the L ILO as the number of unemployed persons as a percentage of the civilian labor forces or force. To this uh, calculation, in practice, the U.S. unemployment rate in, uh, 20, in 2016, November, was 4.6%. 
This was derived from a labor force estimate of 159.486 million and total estimated unemployment was 7.4 million. Second, statisticians published the, on a, the employment population rate, which is the proportion of an economy's uh, of, of an economy's work age population that is employed. To see this calculation in practice, the data published by the uh, by the uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics reveals that in November of 2016, total employment was 11,973.2 thousand, and the working age population was 19.642.7 thousand. This gives an unemployment population rate of 61 percent. Note that the denominators of these two ratios, the unemployment rate and the employment population ratio, are different. The unemployment rate uses the labor force while the, un while the employment population rate uses the working age population, the former being a subset of the latter. We will uh, we will see why this difference matters when a consider when we consider the way the labor market adjusts over the economic cycle and how this impacts on our interpretation of the state of the economy. The unemployment rate is what uh, ec economists refer to as a stock measure. It is defined as a ratio of two stocks, the number of, um, of unemployment uh, numerator and the labor force denominator. The stock measures uh, measure of the unemployment rate is compiled by the national st statistician at a point in time, but usually monthly. The ILO for, uh, states that persons marginally attached to the labor force can, are those who are not economically uh, active under standard definition and employment and unemployment so the so they are out of the labor force but who uh, but uh, but uh, who follow a relaxation in, in one of the standard definitions of employment or unemployment would be uh, reclassified reclassified as economically active thus for example a relaxation of the cri cri criterion used to define availability for work, uh, say from within one week to within four weeks, will increase the numbers of people classified as unemployed. This leads to the likelihood of volatility in the series and the and thus, and thus there can be endless argument about the, about the limits applied to def define the core series. With that said, I will be right back. I hope you're enjoying what you're hearing so far. Please subscribe, comment, hit the notification button, and share. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we are continuing on with number with chapter five of uh, macroeconomics. Anyway, so let's see. Da -da. Impact of small cycle or business cycle on the labor force participation rate. The working age population and the po uh, population age above the minimum wage uh, working age, which is a usually set at 15, you have learned that the proportion of the working age pro population that offers themselves for work is called the labor force participation rate. A change in the participation rate leads to a change in the size of the labor force for any given WAP level. The labor force participation rate is a uh, procyclical vari variable. It ri uh, rises in good economic times. It falls when job opportunities are scarce. This means that in bad times, there are likely to be some workers who would be willing to take jobs that they are offered but who have stopped looking for work and are classified by the national statisticians as being not in the labor force. The workers who are discouraged from job search by the apparent lack of job opportunities are classified as hidden unemployed. From the perspective of availability, these workers are no different to the official rec uh, recorded unemployment. Or unemployed. If a job offer was made to them, they would also uh, take it properly. Properly, excuse me. <laughs> this suggests that in bad times, the official unemployment rate understates the true underlying unemployment 
rate in the, uh, the economy due to the lower rate of labor force participation. Now, there's a figure here of, of uh, 5.2. Um, it says labor force participation rate, Australia, 1980 to 2005%. Um, yeah, anyway. So where the heck was I? Uh, okay, yeah. It shows the labor force participation rate for Australia from, Jan from January 1980 to December 2015, the gray uh, columns note uh, denote appears a slow economic activity. The pattern has two features that are common in the par uh, participation rate of most nations. First, it is clear that there that there have been an overall upward trend in participation over over this time, largely the result of the increased involvement of married women in the labor market. Second. These are distinct cyclical episodes coinciding with fluctua uh, fluctuations in real GDP growth. For example, in the early 1990s, there was a, a uh, severe recession in Australia, which participated or precipitated, excuse me, a major decline in the proportion uh, participation rate. Participation uh, then grew in the early 2000s, which the growth in of employment op uh, opportunities. With the onset of the global financial crisis in the early 2007 and slow in, uh, employment growth, their participation rate fell because job opportunity job opportunities became scarcer. In the late 19 in the late 2008, the uh, Australian government reacted to the crisis by introducing the two large fiscal stimulus packages, which promoted growth and uh, improvement in labor market conditions. The uh, unemployment rate fell early uh, until early 2011, but then steadily increased so over 6% in early 2015, which coincided with the fall in the participation rates, 5.3, which is the category of unemployment. Economists uh, have long used tax taxonomies, taxon taxonomies uh, to organize their thoughts about unemployment. We shall address two of the most popular. These taxo taxono taxonom okay, so that's to be a tough one for me either way. Taxonomies uh, can cut across each other, and no single category is better than the other. The the the, cat the categorization uh, system used depends on the purpose of the analysis. In general, economists have married these uh, married women, married these uh, categorization frameworks into broader theoretical discussion, which seek to explain why unemployment arises, uh, whether it is a problem or not, whether it is a problem or not, and what can be done about it via policy intervention should be considered to be a uh, to consider it to be a problem. The most frequent used typology for unemployment is used the ology part a lot. Uh, for unemployment, distinguishes between frictional, uh, frictional, seasonal, structural, and uh, cyclical demand deficient uh, unemployment. Uh, frictional employment recognizes that the labor market is in constant state of flux. Jobs are continuing. Uh, continually being created and destroyed. So workers who have been laid off or have quit or moved between jobs, while firms seek workers for newly created jobs or to fill existing jobs in, if the previous incumbents have left. Further, new, new entrances into the labor force seek work while retirees have leave jobs. Frictionally, unemployment arises because the matching of these demand and supply flows is not instantaneous. It takes uh, time for workers and employers to gather relevant information and for the, for and the, and for the former to secure employment. Frictionally, unemployment is a short-term phenomenon and part of the normal function, uh, functioning of the labor market. This category would be Expected to comprise around 1 to 2% of the labor force. Seasonal employment arises when certain occupational skill groups and industry sectors experience pre predictable fluctuation of a systematic, uh, systematic seasonal nature over the course of the year. For example, in certain 
regions, workers who are engaged in harvesting agricultural crops will experience seasonal unemployment when they move between crops and, lo and localities. This category is small in magnitude when, assess when assessed uh, on a macroeconomic scale. It is also difficult to distinguish from frictional employment, un unemployment, structural unemployment. Is said to arise when there are there are enough jobs available if overall to match the total pool of unemployment, but there are mismatches between the skills demanded and the skills supplied, and or between the location of the jobs available and the location of the unemployment. This category of unemployment is often discussed in the context of industrial restructuring, for example, the decline of the manufacturing sector or the industrialization changes the composition of the industry employment rate uh, employment cre uh, create job losses in declining sectors and new job opportunities uh, in emerging sectors further given that in industry employment is not spread evenly across the regional spaces a decline a major firm of a major firm in one region will have significant implications for a local labor market changes in te technology also have structural impacts in the sense that the new skills become relevant while old skills cease to be in demand by firms. These dis, uh, dis, disruptions into the pattern of employment rate or employment take time to resolve. The relocation and restraining of workers or retraining, excuse me, retraining of workers displaced by social change is sometimes a lengthy process. It is the it is the uh, changing patterns of required skills, the changing location of jobs, and the extended time taken to resolve the resulting demand and supply uh, imbalance that distinguishes the concept of structural unemployment from fi frictional unemployment. However, there are two important uh, qualifications to the normal conceptual uh, weight. Yeah, important qualifications to the normal conceptualization of structural unemployment, which are not often considered in the mainstream textbooks. First, the idea of a skill shortage is relative is a relative concept. Unsurprisingly, analysis of skills shortages by industry and governments uh, invariably take the prospect perspective rather of business and profitability with an emphasis on the containing, uh, containment of labor costs, both in terms of wages and conditions. Whenever possible, any costs associated with developing the skills that firms require in their workers are externalized. Within this context, the notion of structural unemployment arises from skills mismatch can be understood as implied on uh, implying an unwillingness of firms to offer jobs with attached training opportunities to, un to unemployed workers whom they de deem to fall short of their ideal profi profile. When the labor market is, right and is tight, this selectiveness is more costly and firms are more likely to lower their hiring standards and even package, re and package training opportunities with job offers. However, when labor un, uh, under underutilization is high, firms are easily increase uh, easily increase their hiring standards. That is, broaden that desired characteristics demand from workers. The training dynamis, dynamism uh, driven by labor shortages is then absent. In this case, we observe in a static sense skill mismatches as sim symptoms of low pressure economy. Thus, hiring standards and the willingness of the firms to provide training opportunities when making job offers vary with economic activity. This means that structural unemployment is difficult to distinguish from demand def deficient unemployment, which is related to a lack of aggregate demand in the, ec the economy and like these skills mismatch problems is cyclical in nature. Hence, there are significant overlaps between these categories, which reduce their capacity to provide a definitive, definitive decomposition of total unemployment. Cyclical demand deficient unemployment arises when there is a shortage of jobs overall relative to the willing supply of labor resources, 
persons and hours at the current wage levels. This category is termed demand deficient unemployment because it, re it relates to a deficiency in aggregate demand. Unemployment thus varies of, over the econ economic cycle, rising, rising when aggregate spending falls below the level needed to full employment. Um, Amen. Full employee, excuse me, the available workforce and falling when aggregate spending moves closer to the level needed to fully employ the available supply of labor. Cyclical, uh, cyclical unemployment is also known as mass unemployment. It rises when the ma macroeconomic system fails to generate enough jobs to match the preferences of available workforce. It is also related to the concept of an output gap. An output gap, which means that which measures the percentage de uh, deviation of real GDP from the potential productive production levels at any point in time during uh, an e economic downturn, which may become a recession. Cyclical unemployment will be the dominant proportion of measure measured unemployment when economic activity improves because of the increased aggregate demand. Cyclical unemployment fell falls. In Chapter 19, we, we will see that the economic and social costs of unemployment associated with output gaps are in, enormous, which makes the elimination of cyclical unemployment policy operative. Imperative, excuse me. The solution to cyclical un unemployment is thus to increase the growth rate of aggregate demand to close, to close any output gaps. 5.4, broader measures of labor un underutilization. Figure point uh, five point one summarized the labor force framework for Australia and operate and operating throughout or through the ILO ILO and I and its ICLS. All national statistics uh, st st statistical. There we go. Agencies. I may I may have said it that way from now on. Uh, agencies have broadly similar structures for collecting data about the labor market. We focus on unemployment as an indicator of labor market performances because it signifies a waste of productive resources. Qu uh, quite, a, qu quite apart, quiet apart from the individual and social. Was it quite? Quite one of the two. Uh, social cost the economy the, uh, accompany it. However, unemployment is a narrow measure of labor utilization. Labor utilization arises for a number of different reasons that can be subdivided into two broad function functional uh, uh, categories. A category involving uh, unemployment or its uh, uh, or its near equivalent. In this group, we include the official unemployment um, unemployed under the ILO criteria plus those classified as being not in the labor force due to falling uh, failing to search for. Due to search uh, failing on, on, of employment, discouraged workers, those who are unavailable to start work, other marginal workers, and more broadly still, those who take disability and other pensions as an alternative to, un to un unemployment. Forced pension receipts or recipients. These workers share the characteristics that they have jobless and uh, they are jobless and desire work if there were available vacancies, however, they they fail to satisfy all the criteria for being defined as unemployed. In particular, uh, they are not actively seeking work. A category that involved uh, involves uh, sub suboptimal employment relations. Workers in this category satisfy the ILO ILO criteria uh, for being classified as employed, but suffer time suffer time-related underemployment, which is typically associated with part-time work or an inadequate employment situation working below their skill level. We have already considered the concept of hidden unemployment, which is a near-equivalent state to unemployment. In this section, we focus on the underemployment, which uh, has become an increasingly significant problem for most nations, especially following the 2008 global financial crisis. 
we have seen that within, uh, within the la uh, labor force framework, a person of working age is considered employed if they have worked a minimum number of hours in reference work, uh, reference week for pay, typically at least one hour per week. The, two, the hours require differs across countries, but it is always a low threshold. Otherwise, they are classified as un, unemployed or not in labor force, depending on how they meet the, activ the activity criterion. However, a person working part-time might desire to work more hours, but the state of, of the economic uh, precludes this. This person is, qualified, is qual uh, classified as underemployed. In this case, the underemployment is time-related, referring to employed workers who are constrained by the demand side of the labor market, so work fewer hours than other desire uh, than they desire. Workers in this state are sometimes said to be invisible under underemployment. The other category of underemployment is termed skilled related and refers to workers who undertake jobs which, which have skilled demands below their qualifications. Clearly, if society invests resources in education, then the skills developed should be used appropriately to maximize return on that investment. The concept of an inadequate employment situation, particularly skill-related underemployment, is very difficult to quantify, and this has led to a paucity of data being available to measure it. However, National I hope this always gets me. I don't know why. Uh, stat statisticians have developed a uh, sophisticated measure of time related uh, underemployment or visible underemployment. Uh, in conceptual terms, at different moments of the reference time period, an underemployed worker can be considered both employed and underemployed even though the worker is officially classified as employed throughout the whole period, underemployment workers vary in their desire to extra hours of work. An economy with many part-time workers who desire but cannot find full-time work is less efficient than an economy with or which reflects workers' preferences for work hours being satisfied. In this regard, involuntary part-time workers share characteristics with the unemployed. Uh, table 1.5 shows the the evolution of underemployment in a selection of OECD nations since 1990, rate highest to the lowest as in, as at 2015. The time of the underemployment, like uh, unemployment, arises from the deficiency in aggregate demand. Unemployment manifests as a lack of available jobs, whereas the pres presence of underemployment indicates the, that the demand constraint uh, ra rations, rations, there we go, the hours of work that are offered by firms in both cases, willing labor resources and we are wasted. The two concepts of underemployment are also related to uh, related the rising incidence of underemployment in Many countries since the 1990s has been associated with a rising causal uh, causal casual damn, casualization there we go of the workforce as governments have uh, tilted the industry relations playing field towards employers and reduced workplace protections, including restrictions on the use of non-standard hours of work. As a result, the quality of of Employment has fallen for many workers, often part-time workers, to do not have uh, restrictions on the use of non-standard hours of work. Wait a minute. I think I, uh, as a result, the quality of employment has fallen for many workers, often part-time workers, do not have access. That's what I was looking at uh, to safe, uh, no, so same benefits and protection that full-time workers enjoy. Some employers reduce hours to, to evade labor regulations that apply to full-time workers. This trend has also coincided with the, group, with the growth of the service sector. In many nations, the, this growth has been concentrated on uh, lower-skilled, less stable jobs, underemployment, uh, and is, underemployment is common in these sectors. 
We will see in Chapter 19 that a meaningful definition of full employment should include zero under underemployment. A worker cannot be considered full employed fully employed if they are if they are enduring underemployment. <sighs> okay, so uh, page seventy five. Uh, table five point one is just a graph of what uh, of all the nations that are included in the underemployment. So I'm going to skip that. Uh, the five point five flow measures of unemployment. The stock measure of each state indicates the level at a point in time. However, in each period, there are uh, large numbers of workers that flow between states. Unemployment, uh, e, uh, un unemployment, U, and uh, not in the labor force. The national statisticians measure these flows in their regular labor force surveys. The various stocks and flows are denoted as follows. Single letters denote stocks and two letters not the flows between the two between the stocks. So basically, you have the E, U, N, double E, and stuff like that. So uh, E is unemployment with subscribed T denoted the current per, uh, period and T plus one the next period. Um, U is un, is unemployed uh, and is not in the labor force. Double E or E E flow from the employment to employment. That is the number of people who were employed uh, employed last period and who remain employed this period. The U U uh, flow of the unemployment to unemployment. That is the number of people who are who were unemployed last period and who remain unemployed uh, this period. The N N flow uh, it means flow of those not in the labor mar uh, labor force last period and who remain in the state in the state this period, in that state this period. Excuse me. E U, which is not a European Union, uh, flow from uh, employment to under uh, uh, not under but unemployment. The E N uh, flow from employment to not in the labor force. The UE flow from the uh, unemployment to employment. The UN, uh, not United Nations, uh, flow from unemployment to not in the labor more, uh, not in the labor force. The NE flow from not in the labor force to employment. And U flow from not in the labor force or, un or unemployment. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, share, and yeah. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, part, not uh, part, but page 76. Uh, pay, uh, table 5.2 provides in the and provides a schematic representation of the flows that can occur between the three labor force framework states. To give you some idea of the magnitude of these flows between any given months, the table 5.3 summarizes the flows for the U.S. labor market for the period between December 2015 and, and January 2016, so pretty much like a month. Uh, the data in table 5.3 shows us the total U.S. employment of uh, uh, U.S. employment in December 2015 uh, was 149.678 billion, uh, million, not billion. Some unemployment was 7.541 million, and the number of the persons who were counted as being not in the labor force, uh, in plan, uh, wait a minute, not in the labor force, uh, was 94.495 million. The sum of these stocks is equal to WAP, the population above the age of, eight, of 16 of, um, of 251.714 million. The flows uh, data show that between December 2015 and, and January 2016, 1.594 million workers who were unemployed in December of 2015 and moved into un, and moved into employment or UE by January 2016. Some uh, similarly, 2.1045 excuse me million workers counted as being employed in December of 2015 and had moved into unemployment pool uh, or EU in January 2016. In terms of flow into the category of not in the labor force, 4.818 million workers who are counted as being 
employed in December 2015 exited, uh, exited the labor force, uh, or EN, in January 2016, and 1.859 million workers who were uh, counted as being unemployed in December 2015 left the labor force in the UN uh, in January 2016. Flowing into the labor market were 4.444 million new entrances, uh, entrants and who became employed uh, and 2.099 million new entrances who ended in, ended up in the unemployment uh, in January 2016. Excuse me. The final column and, and row show the levels in, of uh, employment, underemployment, and not in the labor force uh, correspond to December 2015 and January 2016, respectively. They are obtained from the new sums, row sums, excuse me, and the uh, column sums. Employment fell over the month, uh, fell over the month, which reflects the seasonal nature of employment in the winter when some outdoor work cannot be conducted. It is important to recognize the Table 5.3 tracks the labor force status of of the 252.387 million of U.S. citizens who were part of the WAP in both December 2015 and January 2016 it is not include it does not include individuals who joined the WAP in uh, January 2016 due to age or moving to USA and those who left WAP uh, due to death or departure from the USA. The only, uh, the only, uh, we can also, excuse me, calculate the total inflows and outflows from three labor force uh, sta states between any two period periods of interest. And um, uh, table 5.4 shows these calculations based on the data and table 5.3. The total inflow into employment is measured by the sum NE plus UE, and for the uh, period show uh, equaled 6.038 million, whereas the total output from employment measured by the sum EU plus EN was 6.923 million. The net flow was thus negative and equaled uh, 0.885 million workers. This confirms that unemployment or employment between 2015 and 2016 fell. The total inflow into unemployment is measured by the sum EU plus NU and for the period show equaled 4.204 million, whereas the uh, total outflow from unemployment uh, measured by sum EU plus UN was 3.453 million. The net flow was thus positive, meaning the unemployment rose over the period and was equal to 0 0.751 million workers. Finally, the total exits from the labor force into not in the labor force is measured by the sum NEN plus UN and for the period shown equally 6.677 million, whereas the total new entrance into the labor force measured by the sum NE plus NU was 6.543 million. Net flow was thus negative and equal to 0 0.134 million view, uh, workers. The labor work, uh, the labor market stocks and flows. We can understand changes in the stock measure associated with the labor market tax state, excuse me, from one period to the next by considering the net, the net flow between two periods. Total employment at any point in time, or E, is given to equal uh, is given by equ equation 5.1, which is strictly an identity, since an adult member of the population can only be one of the uh, one of three labor market states at a point in time. 5.1 is uh, E equals E plus U E plus N E E uh, minus E U minus E N. In terms of actual flows in the U.S. Mar uh, labor market between December 2015 and January 2016, summarized in Table 5.3 and 5.4, e uh, equation 5.1 is evaluation or yeah evaluation as in millions. So 5.1a uh, e equals 149.678 plus 1.594 plus 4.444. Equal uh, minus 2.105 minus 4.818 equals 148.793.
A change in unemployment in any period, uh, AE is the total inflows minus the total outflows. So it'd be 5.2 AE equals E minus E equals UE plus NE e, uh, minus EU and minus EN. Total unemployment at any point in time, e, uh, which is U, is given by 5.3. So these are sections that I'm reading out, 5.1, uh, 5.1A, 5.2, 5.3, those sections. Numbers in those sections are equal, uh, are, are plus and minus throughout this whole thing. Just in case there's any confusion as far as the part goes. Anyway, so let's see. Da -da -da. 5.3 U equals U uh, T minus 1 uh, plus EU 1 or T, I mean, plus N U T uh, minus E U T N equals U N T. I forgot what the T stood for, but anyway, uh, which is probably total. Um, whatever. Anyway. Total unemployment, we already read that, never mind. Uh, let's see, uh, equ uh, equation 5.3, evaluation uh, evaluated as in millions, uh, 5.3, U uh, T equals 7.541 plus 2.105 plus 2.099 uh, minus 1.594 minus 1.859 equals 8.292. Thus, the change in unemployment is in any period AU to it is total inflows minus the total outflows. The 5.5 AU equals UT uh, minus uh, UT uh, minus one. So minus one or minus one? Is, yeah, minus one uh, equals EUT plus NUT. Uh, minus UE minus UN. We can use the data from table 5.3 to calculate so-called transition probabilities, which are the probabilities that transitions changes of state occur. Uh, occur. They are obtained by div uh, dividing the elements of, of a raw, of a, sorry, of a row of three times three flow matrix by the corresponding row number or row num. Or some, sorry, some. <laughs> anyway, and so it's row sum, just so you know. Uh, and table 5.5, the inter interpretation of, say, 0 0.03 in the first row is that there is a probability of 0 0.03 that, are, uh, that an individual who was employed in December 2015 left the labor force over the following month, allowing for rounding errors, uh, the row each sum to unity. We typically express these probabilities in percentage ter terms, such as the probability of, of a worker who was unemployed in December 2015 or became unemployment uh, unemployed, excuse me, in January of 2016 with 20, was 21%. The likelihood was uh, where, oh, likelihood was uh, lower than the probability of 25%. That a person would transition from the unemployment to being classified as not in the labor force. Economists thus consider the labor market to be very dynamic, and the extent of the this dy dynamism is measured between, no, uh, measured excuse me by the gross flows between the three labor market states, which is also revealed revealed by the transition prob probabilities between the three states as opposed to the probabilities on the main di di diagonal of the transitional tr matrix or EE and UU and NN, which uh, measure the probability of remaining in the same labor, labor market state. Further, these flows are highly cyclical. For example, in a recession, the flow EU increases while the flow UE declines. Workers also drop out of the labor force in greater numbers during a recession so that labor forces are forced. Uh, participation drops and more new labor market entrances enter the state of unemployment rather than employment. Hmm. Yeah, I'm almost done, Mazel, continue on. 
Uh, see duration of unemployment. As noted, the unemployment rate is narrow. It is a narrow measure of labor market performances or performance. Another dimension of labor underutilization, which is uh, which is not cap uh, which is not captured, is the duration of unemployment. As the discussion of flows indicate that the labor market is a very dynamic part of the economy which large which large flows between the labor mar uh, labor force as state occurring on a weekly basis the magnitude of these flows is however highly cyclical and net flows into unemployment are largely during recession than any other time it is therefore important to consider the average duration of an unemployment as part of our assessment of the state of the labor market the Australian Bureau of Statistics, a labor st statistic concept, sources, and methods, provides the following definition. During the unemployment is defined, uh, wait, duration of unemployment, rather, is defined as the elapsed period to the end of the reference week since the time and currently unemployment or unemployed person began looking for work or since the person last worked for two weeks or more. Whichever is the shorter, uh, brief periods of work of less than two weeks since the person began looking for work are disregarded. And that's the ABS 2007. This conceptualization is representative across nations, even if there are even if there are some country by country variations in how the labor force survey is collected. The duration of unemployment influences the way we assess the distributional impacts of a recession. If, for example, individuals who become unemployed only endure short spells of unemployment, that is an average duration of weeks is low, then the impact on their income flow and accumulated savings will be lower than, uh, than if the spells of unemployment are larger or longer. A drawn-out recession typically has the effect of wiping out any savings that has un that an unemployed, unemployed person may have accumulated. For a given unemployment rate, uh, an economy might be criticized or characterized, excuse me, by predominant of predominance of short spells of unemployment. May, many people flowing in and out of the unemployment pool, or at the uh, other extreme, fewer people enduring long spells of unemployment, low inflows uh, into and out, low outflows out of the unemployment pool. While any uh, unemployment above some uh, irredu irreducible minimum weight, uh, weight rate, excuse me, problematic, clearly the situation where individuals experience an unequal duration of unemployment is more costly, both from an individual and an economic uh, perspective. As any example, assume an economy that uh, economy has a labor force of 100 percent or 100 person persons and is enduring an unemployment rate of eight percent. This might occur if eight individuals had become unemployed at beginning of the month. But who will find work in the following month? Next month, eight different individuals become unemployed. Thus, any other individuals has a duration of unemployment uh, of one month. On the other hand, the same uh, the same economy might have the same uh, eight individuals enduring unemployment month after month and still maintaining an unemployment rate at eight percent. Thus, eight individuals had 12 months of continuous unemployment, whereas the remaining 92 individuals remained unemployed for the whole year. The total impact of unemployment upon these two hypothetical economies will obviously be very different. The duration of unemployment disp displays distinct cyclical patterns as ec economic activity starts to slow and the economy enters a recession, there are large flows into the unemployment pool and so short-term unemployment surges. As a result, in the uh, early months of a recession, the overall pool of unemployment is more weighted to individuals with short duration spells of unemployment. As recession endures and the, and the net inflows into unemployment remain positive, but start to decrease, more workers move into large duration of the category, categories of, un, under, of unemployment. In large term, 
oh, sorry, long-term unemployment increases. The average duration of unemployment starts to rise uh, more sharply at this stage. The longer the recession, the higher the higher will be the longer the long-term unemployment rate rise. Uh, and wait, long-term un uh, unemployment rate. This pattern endures even uh, as the economy recovers, as the flow is flows into e un unemployment uh, start to fall. The pool of uh, unemployment is more uh, is now more heavily weighted by individuals with longer spells of unemployment. As a result, the average duration of, a, of an unemployment continues to increase, even though the underemployment or unemployment rate might start falling. The problem is that in the early stages of the recovery, employment growth has to be strong enough to absorb the new entrances into the labor market that is to keep pace with the underlying population growth and start uh, and start uh, eat, uh, eating into the huge po pool of unemployed pool of un uh, unemployed these uh, there is evidence which we discuss later to d suggest that in the early stages of recovery firms prefer to employ uh, workers who have only endured short spells of unemployment. In other words, the longer a person who has been under uh, been unemployed, the lower the, the lower will be probability of the lower the will be the probability of being uh, of a uh, of them gaining work, uh, which is in section five point seven. There are international variations in the uh, official definition of long term unemployment. For example, in the U.S., it is defined as duration of unemployment of six months or more, whereas in Australia the U and the U.K., it is defined as duration of 12 months or more. Figure 5.3 illustrates the way in which the average duration of unemployment behaves during a downturn and... And, uh... Oops. Uh, where's those? Okay, uh, illustrates the way the average duration of unemployment behaves during a downturn and early stages of recovery. Okay, so see in February 2008, the official U.S. unemployment rate, uh, what rate was 4.9 percent, and the average duration of, uh, of unemployment was 16.9 weeks. In the first 12 months uh, of the downturn, the unemployment was increased by 2.9 percent points, percentage points, and the average duration of unemployment rose by 2.9 weeks. However, in the second year of the downturn, the unemployment rate increased by 1.4 percent point percentage points, but the average duration of employment rose by 10.2 weeks. So even as the unemployment rate started to decrease in the third year of the crisis by 0.7 percentage points, the average duration of, of, un, of unemployment increased by uh, uh, have by further 7.3 weeks. Uh, hysteresis 5.7. One of the reasons we worry about situations where the duration of unemployment is high, is high for extended periods related, uh, related relates to the concept of path dependence uh, on uh, hysteresis. Hysteresis is a term drawn from physics and is defined by the Oxford Dictionary as a phenomenon in which the value of physical property lags behind changes in the effect uh, in the effect causing it. As for instance, the, when magnet dis, in, in magnetic induction lags between the magnet was a magnetized force. In economics, we we sometimes say that. Where we where we are today reflects what oh sorry reflects where we are been, where we have been. In other words, the the present and path is path and dependent on more simply history history matters. We will consider this effect in more detail in chapter chapter eighteen because it has implications for how we conceptualize an unemployment rate that is consistent with stable inflation. We will learn that the, the hysteresis effect uh, describes the in interaction between the actual and equilibrium unemployment rates. The implication of hysteris uh, hysteresis is that the unemployment rate associated with stable prices at any point in time should not be conceived as or conceived of as rigid, constrained, on expansionary macro, macro policy. The equilibrium rate. 
itself can be in, reduced by policies that reduce the actual uh, unemployment rate. For this, for the discussion in this chapter, we will continue to uh, continue. Uh, we will confine. There we go ourselves to the way the economic cycle impacts on hiring in the labor market. A recession causes unemployment to rise, and if it's prolonged, short-term uh, joblessness becomes entrenched. Long-term un unemployment, as we noted in the previous section, thus we, will, we would uh, observe a rising average duration of unemployment as the number of long-term unemployed workers rises. However, the unemployment rate behaves asymmetrically, as, yeah, asymmet asymmetrically, excuse me, with respect to the economic cycle, which means that it jumps up quickly but takes a long time to fall again. There is robust evidence to conclude that a worker's chances, a chance of finding a job diminishes the longer their spell of unemployment. When there is a deficiency of aggregate demand and hence uh, lots of unemployed workers seeking jobs, employers use a range, uh, yeah, a range of screening devices when hiring. The screening mechanism effectively shuff, shuffled the unemployment uh, quo queue, excuse me, with the least desired workers relegated to the back of the queue. Among other things, firms increase hiring uh, standards, for example, demand higher qualifications that are, than are necessary and may uh, engage in petty prejudices screened, screened by age, ethnicity, and so on. A common strategy is to engage in st statistical discrimination whereby the firms will conclude that because an average uh, and on average, a particular demographic cohort shows a particular t feature Higher absentee rates, for example, every person from that group must therefore share the negative characteristics. According, accordingly, they will screen job, screen job applicants using that information, even if the average has no relevance to the, any particular person in that cohort. Personal characteristics such as, as gender, age, race, and other forms of discrimination are thus used to shuffle the disadvantaged workers to the back of the queue. In this context, the concept of hysteresis relates to the to how the labor market adjusts over the economy, economic cycle. In a recession, many firms uh, many firms disappear altogether, particularly those which are which were using uh, very dated capital equipment. That were that was less productive and has subject to a higher unit cost than the uh, best practices te best practice technology. Disadvantage for the, sorry disadvantage the disadvantage the long term unemployed. This phenomenon is referred to as skill at atrophy. Skill atrophy extends extends beyond the uh, specific skills needed to operate a piece of equipment or participate in the, uh, in the firm's specific process. Long-term unemployment also erodes more general skills because the psychological damage of unemployment impacts on a worker's confidence and bearing. A lot of information about the labor market is, glean is gleaned, you know, gleaned it from informally uh, via social networks, and there is strong evidence pointing to the fact that as the duration of unemployment increases, the the breadth of of, of quality of unemployed of unemployed workers social network declined. Uh, so the, the new entrances in the labor force enter the unemployment pool because of the lack of jobs. They are they are then denied relevant skills and the socialization associated with stable work patterns. Further, because training opportunities are often provided with level low, entry level jobs, it follows that the average skill of the labor force declares uh, declines when vacancies fall. Thus, be, both groups of workers, those who have lost their jobs and the new entrances, need to find jobs to update or uh, or and or acquire relevant skills. Skills experience up, upgrading also occurs through mobility from jobs, which is which is restricting during a downturn. Therefore, workers who have endured shorter spells of unemployment, all else being all else being equal, 
will tend to be closer to the front of the unemployment risk of unemployment queue. Firms assume that those who are enduring long-term unemployment are likely to be less skilled than those who have just lost their jobs and with so many workers to choose from, firms are reluctant to offer training. There is also a self-fulfilling prophecy effects on employer perception. This candidate has been unemployed for 18 months, therefore they, they must be some, there must be something wrong with them. However, just as the downturn generates these skills, loses uh, losses and imposes longer duration of unemployment and on certain groups, a growing economy will start to provide training opportunities and the queue of unemployed diminishes. This is one of the reasons that economists believe it is important for the government to stimulate economy growth when a recession is limited to ensure that skill acquisition can occur more easily. As demand picks up and the pool of unemployed, of unemployed workers shrinks, and employers need to be need to be much uh, pick, much less picky. Tight full employment has been defined as a situation in which there are more vacancies than there are uh, unemployed workers seeking jobs. In such conditions, even the most disadvantaged workers can obtain work. Groups that have unfairly faced racial, ethnic, or gender bias and who work at the back of the queue, uh, who were at the back of the queue in times of the low economic activity, are more like are more able to transition to employment and receive requisite training opportunities. Maintaining tight full employment helps to reduce the likelihood that employers will indulge in these in, uh, irrational bi biases. Conclusion, Chapter 5 examined what is often called the labor market or the potential labor force available to an e uh, economy and introduced the labor force free uh, framework, which classifies labor resources into a, a number of categories, employed, unemployed, underemployed, and not in the labor force. The chapter discussed how the uh, labor force participated participation rates the unemployment rate and the un unemployment rate are calculated calculated and demonstrate that any attempt to obtain an accurate measure of a nation the nation's unemployment or uh, unemployed excuse me labor resources is fraught with difficult choices many of those are officially classified as unemployed are working for far few hours than they would like and many are working in jobs do, that do not allow them to fully use their skills in education. Many of those who are, are officially classified as not in the labor force but really would like a job but have given up looking for one. The chapter examined flows of workers between the categories showing that there is a great amount of flux in labor markets. Individuals move away, uh, move among categories so that many so that many of those who lose jobs are not counted among the un unemployed, and many of those who gain jobs are not counted as previously unemployed. The use of measures of labor market stage of transition probabilities helps to demonstrate how dynamic the labor market can be. Categories of unemployment were ex examined frictional, seasonal, and structural, and, and cyclical. The concept of an uh, output gap, which me measures the participation uh, uh, percentage, excuse me, deviation of real GDP from potential production levels was introduced as the output gap rises, that is, as output falls over uh, further below potential, the unemployment rate rises and labor force participation rate falls. And that concludes chapter five. Uh, Monday will be Chapter 6, Sectoral Accounting and the Flow of Funds. Uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you for listening. I uh, hope you enjoy this, and I hope that you decide to... Uh, I hope you decide to uh, sub, uh, subscribe, uh, comment, uh, hit that like button, share, all of the above, pretty much. But thanks for uh, uh, thanks for uh, listening. And for more MMT related material, go to realprogressives.org. org. Uh, on YouTube, go to uh, seek out the Rogue Scholar. 
uh, seek out uh, Real Progressives in Action, uh, seek out the Luke Parker Show, um, seek out you down with MMT, my show, and this is where and that's where this is going as far as that part goes. Either way, subscribe to those channels, come comment those channels, uh, hit the uh, bell and share. Uh, thanks for listening and hope you have a good weekend. Peace out for now. Talk to you Monday.